All right, so this is the first application of differentiation that we're seeing. Um, I just went ahead and wrote out most of it before the video. Uh, you guys might notice that my my screen lags a lot when I write big words, so it's just easier to do it this way sometimes. And then you don't have to sit there watching me draw the whole time. So anyways, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, the problem is throwing a, cliff, uh, throwing a rock straight up off of the edge of a cliff. Uh, we're going to see how long it takes the rock to stop, how high the rock is going to go, and then how long it's going to take for the rock to come back down and hit the water. And we'll also be able to find out how fast it's going when it hits the water, the velocity on impact. So just a few things here. The cliff, we're going to say, is 100 meters tall. Above this point, the water level, which we're going to say this is the point zero for height. Um, we're going to say we're throwing the, the rock up at 30 meters per second. And just for simplicity, we're going to say that gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Instead of 9.81, etc. Um, it's just going to be easier to work with these numbers, for example. Um, so just so you guys get the hang of this. And just remember that up is in the positive direction, so the velo initial velocity is positive going up, but gravity is negative going down. So uh, the next thing we should say is that um, we know that the derivative of a function is the rate of change of that function. So if, we have, if we're given the acceleration, we know that that's the rate of change of velocity, and we know that velocity is the rate of change uh, in distance from something moving from the origin which we're saying is zero at this point. Not necessarily the point that we threw it from, uh, the point of reference we're using at zero is the water level. So we can actually go ahead and we can write these out starting with uh, given values we have. We know what acceleration is. We know it's negative 10 meters per second squared. So let's write that in here. Negative 10 meters per second squared. Now to get velocity, we need to take the antiderivative of uh, its S double prime. So the antiderivative of negative 10 uh, is just negative 10t. And what we're doing here is we're going to be taking everything with respect to time because we, we want to find about we want to find lots of information about time. Uh, and that's just kind of the, what we do with related rates problems. It's always just default to uh, taking derivatives with respect to time. And so now also with this, because it's uh, just an indefinite integral or an antiderivative, what we have to do is we have to add a plus c, plus that constant. But because this is a real problem, um, that constant that we're adding is actually going to be the initial velocity. That's what that c represents. So the initial velocity is positive 30 meters per second. So we'll just add that in. That's plus 30. We can put in units, meters per second. Now, for distance, we're going to, again, take the antiderivative of velocity now. So the antiderivative of negative 10t is going to be negative 5t squared. And now the antiderivative of 30 is going to be 30t. And we also have to add plus c again. But now, for this in this scenario, that plus c is actually going to be the, uh, plus the initial position in meters. And in this case, uh, our initial position from the origin that we're talking about is we're starting 100 meters above it. So we'll say plus 100 meters. So now that we have that, we can figure out uh, all these things. So we'll start with when, when will the rock stop. So what we can do is we want to find when the velocity is equal to zero. And so we want to find it for at the time when it's at its, its, uh, its maximum height. So let's call this like... Let's just say s at tm for the tm maximum height. So say s at tm is going to be equal to negative uh, 10 tm plus 30 plus 30. And this is all going to be equal to 0. So if we arrange for this, if we rearrange for tm, we will get uh, negative 30 divided by negative 10 is going to be 30 over 10. Or we'll also get tm, uh, just cancel those out, and we'll get tm is equal to 3 seconds. So that's how long the rock uh, takes for it to stop once you throw it up in the air. So now we know the time that it takes to get to the maximum height. So now we're, we want to find out how high it is. So now we're going to be looking at the distance uh, equation here. And so we know that the time to get to the maximum height is 3. So we're going to be looking for s at 3. 
let's change colors again so don't get lost. So we'll say s at 3 is going to be equal to negative 5 at 3 squared plus 30 times 3 plus 100. Okay, so s at 3 is going to be equal to negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. Uh, 30 times 3 is 90, so this will be plus 190. And we'll find out that s at 3, s at 3 is going to be equal to 145. Uh, and this is 145 meters. This is 145 meters above zero, or if you want to think about it from the, where you threw it, it'll be 45 meters above from where you threw it. But we're talking uh, zero, our zero reference point is the water level. So it's 145 meters above the level of the water right now. Now, the quickest way to find out uh, when the rock will hit the water is we already know that the, uh, we already know that the rock has been in the air for three seconds until it reaches the maximum height. So just keep that in mind. We'll just write that up here. Don't forget three seconds. But what we're going to do is we're going to calculate for s at zero because we want to find out when it's hitting here. So we'll write it like this. s at zero is going to be equal to, uh, bear with me for one second, negative 5t squared, negative 5t squared, uh, plus zero plus 145. And this way, you'll see that what we're really doing here is this was our, remember this was our initial velocity uh, in the middle point here. So what we're saying is our initial velocity is zero and our initial position is 145 and this is our acceleration. So what we're saying basically is we're going to consider this from where it starts up here 145 uh, meters at, at zero velocity and it's just going to free fall and accelerate down to the water and that is just going to we're just going to add three seconds onto that for the three seconds it took to get up there and this is actually just going to be the quickest way to do that. So if we just now rearrange, we want to solve for t, and this was, yeah, this was equal to zero. So now we'll just put t squared on one side, and this will become equal to, it's negative 145 divided by negative 5, so this will be 145 divided by 5, uh, which is equal to actually 29, and so t will be equal to the square root of 29 which is roughly, uh, this is roughly, let's see, 5.385 seconds. But don't forget, we have this three seconds up here that we want to add to it. So the time that it actually takes to hit the water is going to be roughly 8.385 seconds. So don't forget to add that three seconds on. And that's... There's other ways to do it, but I just find that's just the quickest and uh, I just don't get confused as long as you don't forget to add the three seconds. Now the way we did this is useful also to find the velocity on impact. So if we want to find the velocity on impact, uh, we're looking at the velocity equation again. And so now this is going to be um, S prime at and the time that it took to accelerate from zero down to its final velocity was root 29 seconds or 5.385 so we can just write that here root 29 fits a little bit better uh, now this is going to be equal to we'll use this formula again so negative 10 times uh, root 29 plus 0 because our, our initial velocity according to this we're talking about once it starts at 145 meters above and just starts free falling down until it hits the water. It's going to get faster and faster, but starting at zero from that point. Now, uh, so let's just work this out. So we had uh, negative 10. Root 29 was roughly, what did we have? 5.385 5 seconds. No, let's uh, just move the decimal place over one. So we get 53.85 meters per second and that's negative it's in the downward direction there you go that's its velocity on impact and now that you've seen a couple of the applications of differentiation uh, we're just going to get right into a couple more so join me in the next couple of videos and we'll see some other uses of derivatives